all week this week, you're going to be um, given a different function to explore. Um, functions are the way we make models in economics. And the, the graphical outcome of the model is what we've been studying at A-level. But at university, it's really very seldom done. That's not the focus. It's the actual function. It's the equation. And so the function that you looked at at the very beginning of, of your course is really this one here. This is the basic production function. And it says that uh, the quantity of output is a function of capital and labor. And the graphical outcome of that is this picture right here. So there are some quantities of production and labor that we can, capital and labor, that we can put to the use and and there are coefficients for these things that refer to the elasticity of them. Um, and then we end up here with our level of output. Okay, so now that being the case, we end up with these lines and we called that the production possibility frontier or the linear production function it's sometimes referred to as. Last day we had class. I introduced to you something called the Cobb-Douglas production function. Now the Cobb-Douglas function takes labor and capital, but they don't get combined in a linear fashion. They get combined in some non-linear fashion where they're raised, here you can see raised to uh, a higher power. So um, capital is um, impacted by the efficient use of technology. So labor is also affected by the efficient use of technologies and um, what, what the labor technologies are really are like training and um, practice and that sort of thing. Uh, the efficiency of the worker mindfulness could be part of the technology. And the technologies for capital are how good the, the capital tool is at being implemented. Um, so for example, how quickly does your computer turn on affects how well you're going to be able to use that computer, how responsive a robot is to instructions and how precise it is, is going to determine how efficient that is at, at creating a level of output that is needed. So you have these functions that are nonlinear because it, the technology uh, tends to improve things. And as you saw in the PPF or the linear function, technology moves outward. Yeah, over time, it creates greater production um, uh, uh, frontiers, possibility frontiers. What's really fascinating about the, the diagram that you're looking at here is that the shape of the actual curve is impacted by the level of the technology that's implementing on both the capital and the labor. So if we end up with like a very uh, efficient piece of technology uh, only for capital, so this would be like um, improvements in speed in the internet, say, that actually will change the slope of the curve itself. So the black line that's here is a bit of a misnomer. It's the, the shape of the curve may radically change and that can impact this, uh, or the, the, the relationship, the, the, um, the, the likely combination of capital and labor that are required, right? So if, if a, by way of example, um, the, uh, the efficiency of, uh, let, let, we'll take a piece of capital for you. So right now in, in your course, we're using at least four textbooks, right? We've got the three, Mankiw, uh, Lipsy, and Sloman, and we have our own class textbook. And then to that, we've recently added core econ to make it five, but if somebody came out with a new piece of technology, like one textbook to rule them all, not to make a Lord of the Rings reference, but then we wouldn't need so many other sources. We wouldn't have to flip back and forth. I wouldn't have to research to find which textbook has the best version of events. We could just use that new technology to improve the capital, which is the textbook. And that might mean that we have less capital that we need overall because the efficient use of that capital has been improved. You, I hope, that I'm, hope that's making sense to you. It's hard to know in video whether or not the things you're saying uh, can be understood. But that's not what today is about. Today is about something called the Lantif production fu function. And Lantif is uh, what happens when we end up with a fixed quantity of inputs and outputs. Um, and so, uh, a good example with this for this would be like um, uh, tires for cars and steering wheels for cars. So 
a, a car only needs one steering wheel. And with very few exceptions, a car needs to have four tires. So regardless of the amount of the inputs for the thing, um, we're, we're, we're going to have to have a combination that works in that fashion. We're going to have to have four of one and, and, and one of the other. Um, and there is no, th that's a fixed relationship. So um, that's just how that works. Now, it might well end up being the case that we change the efficiency with which we are applying uh, steering wheels, and that may, might mean that we have to spend less time on them overall. But finally, uh, the total amount is, is going to be a fixed relationship. And so instead of having a curve, we end up with like a, a, a straight line for, for the two um, components, and those then form... Um, in the apex of the of the of the join of the lines, we we get the idea that there's a constant line that's moving there, and so so that's what the Lantif production function's all about. It's about what happens when the the necessary inputs to a productive process are uh, are, are fixed, um, and yet technology and costs still shape those fittings. Um, so so. You can read about Lantif all over the place. In this, this, this is a briefing book, and it's called InPlan, and InPlan is very helpful. They've got a lot of interesting advisory notes. Um, also, strangely, uh, the um, the resources that are available in general are are very helpful. Note the Wikipedia page here identifies a, a picture for the long t function uh, which looks quite different from the cobb douglas function so the long t function here it looks like a, a pyramid uh, based on um, there's only two sides there's no back to the pyramid whereas the cobb douglas function of last day had a distinct curve curved shape to it uh, this is just straight and these three-dimensional um uh, diagrams help us to understand the relationship between uh, the inputs of capital and labor and the and the total amount of output that is possible given um, the various technology levels. Mm. All right, uh, so there you go. You can read a little bit more of this. This is where the example of um, tires came from. And there is uh, one other that I wanted to show you. Uh, hold on a second, uh, bear with me. And that is here. Um, you know, these are the three core production functions that you're going to learn about next year. And another website that I would encourage you to take a look at because, you know, it might be relevant in your future um, is explained if you haven't ever seen this before. And here we explain through explained um, the three functions you need to know. The linear production function, the Cobb-Douglas function, and the fixed proportion or Lantif function. You could read more about these things uh, in general, but I think this is a particularly good article. It gets straight to the point. There we are. I'll take those links and I will post them to you and we will discuss whether or not you in class are more likely to follow uh, Lantif, Cobb-Douglas, or linear production functions in terms of your performance. I will tell you the data that I have so, so far. Thanks so much. Toodles.